says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye might know what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Christian Perspectives seeks to help Christians do this by attempting to give insight and meaning to our daily Christian lifestyle for both the young and old, those who work, those who are in school, and those who stay home. And now, here's your host for Christian Perspectives, Reverend Russell Morrow. Welcome to this edition of Christian Perspectives. I'm your host, Russell Morrow. This evening, our guests are the Reverend B.T. Moore, pastor of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Cleveland, and Dr. Kurt Lamar, professor at Delta State University. Gentlemen, it's good to have both of you with us this evening on Christian Perspectives. This evening, we're going to talk about the challenge of Christian discipleship. Last week, the guests that appeared, we discussed the fifth chapter of St. Matthew, and we focused on verses six, 13 to 16. And this evening, I wanted to focus on verses 21 to the end of the chapter, where Jesus discusses six standards, or six challenges, if you will, of Christian discipleship. For example, in verse 21 through 27 of the fifth chapter of Matthew, Jesus points out that anger is the root to physical, mental, and verbal murder. And he points out that such anger is not conducive for a Christian discipleship because it alienates them from God. In verses 27 to 31, Jesus points out that lust leads us to separation from God. Uh, it's a sin. A lot of people don't like to accept that, but it truly is. And it's one of the challenges that, as Christians, we must uh, accept. In verses 31 and 32, Jesus points out the, that divorce, for any other reason than infidelity, is wrong. For when this is done, it causes the spouse to, to develop another relationship somewhere else, which is not acceptable in the eyes of God. And then in verses 33 to 37, Jesus speaks against swearing and cursing, because the Christian is to always be truthful. And if a Christian is truthful, he never needs to swear or to, 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 to make oaths to prove his point. And then in verses 33 to 47, Jesus teaches us not to retaliate against wrong with wrong. Uh, in other words, it's not an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. And then in verses 43 to 44, one of the most difficult challenges uh, that we as Christians have to accept is the challenge of loving, particularly our enemies, those that do us wrong. We have to love them. And for our viewers, I wanted to discuss some of these uh, teachings of Jesus in order to share some insight and some light for those who are having a difficult time turning the other cheek, for those who are having a difficult time coping with their lusts and things like that. So, in just looking at verses 21, where Jesus talks about anger, question, question that comes to my mind is, what would you suggest as a, a practical method for Christians to use in dealing with their own anger, the anger that they might have built up inside of them? Uh, you know, just, just living will cause us to be angry, how would you suggest a Christian could deal with that? Pastor Moore? Reverend Moore, I would say that uh, number one, you must be born again mm -hmm. and adopted into the royal family. For Second Corinthians 5, 17 said, therefore, mm -hmm. if any man be in Christ Jesus, old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. He's a new creature mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. And that's where the Christians get their name from because they're followers of Christ. And mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul said, let this same mind be in you which were also in Christ Jesus. So 
that's the only way we can uh, accomplish that. Okay. Is to be more like Christ. Okay. And and Christ so fixed it. He was in the world, mm -hmm. but not of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, most of us is in the world and then a part of the world, trying to play both sides of it, but, mm -hmm. but not so if we're going to be worshipers and followers of Christ. Okay, all right. Dr. Lamar? I think uh, the very idea of using Christ as an example is, is one thing that we probably would need to consider. Uh, Jesus was both human and divine. This is one of the tenets of the Christian faith, the Christian doctrine. And being human, he, in one case, in one instance, showed a little angry himself in the, in the uh, incident of the, of the money changers in mm -hmm. the temple. But for the most part, Jesus uh, was the exemplar, the, the uh, one who, who uh, gave us the example of what to be like and what to strive like. Of course, no one can be Christ but we can be more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. And I would just suggest that anyone, when he's angry, and of course we all are angry from time to time because we are human beings, but the Christian must certainly consider the fact that uh, uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, if someone makes you angry, then simply uh, taking your anger out on them is not going to solve anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to be a little more reflective. Uh, consider what will I gain by lashing out at someone, showing my anger? Uh, will this really solve the problem? I don't think it will. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that uh, being a Christian and having to deal with anger and is a growth process? Would you agree that it's a growth process? Well, being a Christian is not easy. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's, I think we would all agree. Uh, it, it's, it, you have to work to be a Christian, even though one commits himself to the Christian faith, uh, as, as the Reverend said, he's born again, uh, he tries to be more Christ-like. It's, it's a difficult day-in, day-out task that you have to work at. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's an angry world that we live in, unfortunately. Right. right or wrong, and and this is something you see a lot of, of people who express their anger, I'm mad at this, mm -hmm. and I think the Christian has a duty to, to show the way. Right. Uh, Reverend, too, and uh, as his folks stated, this uh, Christian task mm -hmm. is uh, serious business. Mm -hmm. It's a hard race to run. That's right. But uh, knowing Christ mm -hmm. and allowing him to abide in us, okay. uh, we'll be able to withstand all of the things that come from us. For an example, for a long time it bothered me. I wondered uh, uh, what the writer meant when he said, pray for those that despitefully use you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know when you can pray for your enemies, you know you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And that's hard to do. Right. But when you can pray for those that despitefully, you love your enemies, mm -hmm. you're on the right road. That's one of the challenges that uh, Jesus talks about here in the fifth chapter of Matthew. How can a Christian deal with his or hers physical lusts. Now, we know that when you're born again, and you're growing in Christ, and his grace is sufficient in your life, and you're making great strives to make heaven your home. But the reality of it is that everybody, even those who are saved, young in the faith, they have to contend with their own physical passions and their physical desires. What would you suggest to a Christian who is being torn between their lusts and wants to make heaven their home? 
Uh, the scripture says, you know, if your eye or your hand offend thee, pluck it out, cut it off. But we can't really practically do that. How, wh how would you minister to persons like that, Dr. Lamar? Well, <clears throat> of course, I think sometimes we, we must keep in mind the historical perspective. Uh, Jesus was dealing in, uh, living in a time uh, a very hard time and dealing with some, some rather rigorous rules. He came into a society in which uh, uh, law was everything. The, the Jewish law mm -hmm. was so rigid. And uh, I think when he said, pluck your eye out or cut your hand off, he was, he was using shock value. He was using a metaphor here mm -hmm. rather than, as you said, literally. Right. But he was indicating something then that's just as difficult, if not more difficult today, and that's uh, morality. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, being humans, had some of the same problems that we have, uh, maybe in a different nature, but uh, you just have to, to work at it. Uh, lust is something that uh, is, is ever-present, I'm afraid. It's always a temptation, uh, more so for some people than for others. But the true Christian has, has simply got to follow the tenets of, of, and the teachings of Christ uh, really put into perspective by St. Paul mm -hmm. and you've, you've just got to, to work at it as, right. as uh, he said. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. That's right. That's right. And, and two, uh, the thought that come to my mind, the Apostle Paul, the chief expounder mm -hmm. of the gospel, he, he found himself in the inner conflict. He said, things I should do mm -hmm. I do not. Mm -hmm. Things I should not do is the things I do. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to say that uh, God's grace mm -hmm. is sufficient. Mm -hmm. We are growing in grace. We are growing through perfection. Mm -hmm. And and these things is going to come. It also said if you, you your brother, uh, if you go a mile and if he compel you, you, you go an extra mile. And, mm -hmm. And so many times I've, I've uh, found myself going extra miles with, with my neighbors, extra miles with uh, people in the community, mm -hmm. uh, things that I said I wouldn't do, uh, uh, something on the inside. And I think uh, uh, Jeremiah said when they, when they get between the joint, marrow and the bone is like fire set up in your bones and, and that will make you come out wanting to do more mm -hmm. for those that uh, m misuse you. And that's what I, I, I think uh, Matthew is talking about when he say, uh, turn the, the other cheek. If a person do you wrong, mm -hmm. give you a stone, you give them bread. And cast your bread upon the water, and after many days mm -hmm. it shall return. Okay. We're going to pause for a moment and take a break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue on and talk about divorce and what you had just mentioned, turn another cheek. We'll be right back. It's new, unique, a refreshingly different family viewing experience. The AX Satellite Network. AX, designed to have universal appeal to almost every segment of the American public. and more only on Axe, the Axe Satellite Network. Welcome back to Christian Perspectives. Our guests are the do is Dr. Kurt Lamar of Delta State University and Reverend B.T. Moore, Sr. 
of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. At this particular time, we're going to give each gentleman an opportunity to talk a little bit about themselves and what they do and their families. Dr. Lamar. Well, I'm a professor of history, uh, with specialty in Latin American history and British history at Delta State University. I've been there since 1969. Uh, I was a little bit frightened not too long ago when someone mentioned that I'm a senior member of the faculty now, and I didn't <laughs> consider myself as being such. But I'm a member of Calvary Episcopal Church in Cleveland, uh, where I serve as a licensed lay reader. Uh, this is a position in which you have, one, has done some study, considerable study in scripture and theology, and is licensed by the Bishop of Mississippi to assist the priest in a number of his duties uh, concerning the worship service. I'm a former senior warden at Calvary Episcopal Church. Uh, this is the uh, chief lay officer in the Episcopal Church within a parish. Uh, I'm married to my childhood sweetheart. Uh, and she is currently the in-service coordinator at Bottle County Hospital. Uh, she's an RN. I have a daughter who is a junior at Delta State, Elise. Uh, a daughter who's a freshman at Delta State, uh, Bethany, good biblical name. Yeah. And uh, a son, Kendall, who is in the ninth grade at Margaret Green Junior High School. Okay. All right. Pastor Moore. Well, I'm uh, B.T. Moore Sr., mm -hmm. as you first stated, uh, the father of four lovely boys and three girls, and I have uh, two ministers, B.T. Moore Jr. Mm -hmm. and Gregory Moore, just uh, recently, about a year mm -hmm. into the ministry. And unfortunately, I had to uh, uh, raised six of them by myself, okay. so it was a struggle, but I'm thankful to God that he blessed me to be able to do it, uh, uh, and I, with his help, mm -hmm. I was able to accomplish the goal. All of them have a, a lovely education, mm -hmm. and uh, my oldest one is Louise, mm -hmm. and the second one is Reverend Gregory Moore, third one, B.T. Jr., the fourth one, Beverly Ann, mm -hmm. uh, the fifth one, Amela, <laughs> <Trouble laughs> <man. laughs> Gregory, I mean, uh, uh, Ke Brian Kenneth Moore, and the baby is Tony Moore. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I've been fortunate, I've been blessed to have a lovely family. Mm -hmm. We are very close, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm passed in also or the minister of the Newport Baptist Church. I thought I ought to mention Newport because uh, uh, when you add this, you know, <laughs> they will know that I mentioned that name. They are sweet people. Okay. Newport at Lexington, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and also here, St. Paul Baptist Church of Cleveland. So did I hear you make a slight hint to the fact that you're an eligible bachelor? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it's true, and I think maybe uh, that happened. I, I thought it was a bit of pill to swallow. Uh, usually, uh, uh, men leave home, mm -hmm. but it was the other way around okay. with me. So <laughs> I had to, I had to be the father, right. and uh, act as the mother for the six of them out of the seven. Okay. But I have no regrets. Praise no regrets. Lord. Thank God for allowing me to do it. But on the side now with my ministry, I'm a brick mason, mm -hmm. carpenter, okay. concrete finisher, a jack of all trades, fair, you know, oh, and wow. most of them. So the Lord has blessed you with many yes. talents and gifts. Gentlemen, we were talking about the challenge of Christian discipleship and we focused on a key point that Jesus wanted his disciples to understand and that is that he requires us to be moral beings, to live good, solid, moral lives. And we're living in a society where morality is on such a fast decline. Uh, both of you have uh, 
warm families and strong family ties. I myself have a strong tie with my daughter. Yet the family in America is decaying and over 50% of marriages end up in divorce. Now, there has been quite a bit of uh, debate through the years about Jesus' teachings on divorce. Uh, he says in this chapter that the law states that you should not divorce unless it's, uh, you had a spouse that was unfaithful. My question to you is, can divorce be more than just, as it was in that day, uh, writing a letter and putting away your wife quietly or making a, a public spectacle? In this society, can divorce be more than that? Can divorce from your family be uh, your involvement in your job, in your work, that it's so great, your interests outside of the family that you neglect your family spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Is that a form of divorce, would you say? And would you say that a person is just as guilty for doing that as he would be leaving his or her spouse? Well, the word divorce itself means to separate from. Uh, and, and this, as you indicate, does not necessarily mean just uh, a man and a wife uh, going through the legal process of getting a divorce. Uh, a man can divorce himself from his family if he commits himself to his work, mm -hmm. to the extent that he ignores the, the family. We, we hear a lot about workaholics today. It's not just a man, a woman right. with so many women working. This mm -hmm. can also be a problem and may well be one of the uh, more uh, noticeable causes. I may get in trouble with that because so many women have to work and enjoy working, but some sociologists say that beginning with World War II when so many women went into the labor force and in the post-war years there was a lull, but then they went back. Uh, if this has caused a, a, a growing problem, problem for families. Mm -hmm. I, I have strong, strong feelings about divorce. Uh, uh, in fact, my wife and I have, she being a nurse and seeing some of the, the horrors of uh, what children have to go through from separation of, of the spouses or when the spouses stay together, the problems that the children have there. Uh, but I, I think that it's something that, that two people, if they're going to commit themselves to one another mm -hmm. in, a, in a marriage contract, then they should certainly work to, to, to see that it, it is successful. Mm -hmm. And I think we've just made it a little too easy in this modern society, mm -hmm. uh, almost a, a, a superficial type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little old-fashioned, I suppose, but I, I think that two people should really get to know each other. And, and through, the, uh, through the old uh, concept of a Christian relationship, make sure that they're compatible mm -hmm. before they, they take this step. Some people just get married and then they realize they don't know each other. That's right. That's right. Reverend? Uh, as uh, Dr. said, that's so true. Uh, and a lot of time uh, when two people meet and, and go before the uh, preacher or judge and, and uh, you have that ceremony, it's not necessarily that that's his wife mm -hmm. or he is her husband. They can live in the same house mm -hmm. for years, mm -hmm. think you know each other, mm -hmm. but when Satan creeps in, mm -hmm. and especially when uh, you're in the ministry, trying to do the will of God, that's when Satan really gets after mm -hmm. the minister to try to block his progress. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you got to have a strong wife. It takes a special uh, woman mm -hmm. to be a preacher's or a pastor's wife. Or any strong committed any Christian. Any committed Christian. That's right. So, uh, uh, and a lot of time, 
the man don't want to make that commitment, mm -hmm. then sometimes the woman will mm -hmm. make that commitment, won't stick to it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people uh, go through the, the procedures and get married, uh, but not joined by God. Mm -hmm. Say, whom I joined together? Let no man put us under. I believe it said in Genesis that a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and cleave to his wife and says to the man, uh, love your wife. I think that marriages should, in, in ministering and, and adding to what both of you gentlemen have said, Marriage is something that should be taken with the understanding that there is no back door out. Yeah. And I also believe that more clergymen should counsel before uh, persons get married. And that in itself could possibly, well, would help eliminate some of the divorce factor, especially when folk come to the church. When you come to the church, you're asking God to sanction yeah. the marriage. And if you're asking God to sanction the marriage, then you have a responsibility uh, it's not, you know, it's not good to come to church because, so you can say you had a church wedding, but uh, you want God to bless that marriage and that wedding ring means that there's a bond between you two and the only other person that's a part of that bond is God himself within that, that circle. We didn't even get to the rest of the discussion, but I thank you gentlemen both for coming and being with us on Christian Perspectives. And certainly we hope that someone in the viewing audience has been touched and helped by this discussion. Thank you for tuning in to Christian Perspectives this week. And we hope that you'll tune in next week for during the month of February, we'll be talking about Christian stewardship. We hope that you are going to church. If you don't have a church home, find one and read the word of God particularly Matthews, the fifth chapter. God bless you, heaven smile upon you, and see you next week.